Antichrist is here, but is not visible to everyone, nor does everyone know that the Antichrist has already arrived. The Bible teaches us that history isn't just a random series of events, it's more like a timeline with a beginning and an end. So let's dive into this video to know whether the Antichrist has arrived and who it is. In Christian beliefs about the end of the world, the Antichrist is a person or group of people mentioned in the Bible. They are said to be against Jesus Christ and pretend to be like him. Before Jesus returns, the word Antichrist is found in the New Testament four times, specifically in the first and second epistle of John. It's associated with those who deny God the Father and Jesus the Son. In the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, Jesus warns his followers not to be fooled by false prophets who will claim to be the Christ and do impressive things. These impostors are sometimes called false Christs. There are a few different images connected to the Antichrist in the Bible, like the little horn in Daniel's vision, the man of sin in Paul the Apostles writing to the Thessalonians, and the beast of the sea in the book of Revelation. These are all complex ideas, but they're basically about people or forces that go against Jesus and his teachings. But what are the theories suggesting the arrival of the Antichrist? Here they are, the rich billionaire theory, this theory suggests that the Antichrist will be a super rich and powerful person. This Antichrist would use their massive wealth to control governments and global systems. The theory is based on some Bible verses, including a beast with ten horns and seven heads that people think symbolize different nations or powerful groups. In this theory, the Antichrist, being a rich billionaire, could control these structures, leading a big global company or being a powerful political figure connected to many countries. The beast has power over everyone, and people worship it because of its strength. This shows how much influence and control this wealthy person could have in modern society. The theory suggests their enormous wealth could help them shape people's opinions, control the media, and even influence political leaders. The apostate church leader theory, there is a belief that the Antichrist could emerge from the Christian church, albeit in a distorted manner. This leader may adopt a corrupted form of Christianity, deviating from crucial beliefs. This notion draws inspiration from Bible passages that discuss individuals abandoning their faith in the latter days, such as 1 Timothy 4 verses 1-2. According to these passages, some individuals may turn away from genuine Christian teachings and follow a misleading path, potentially setting the stage for the emergence of an Antichrist figure from within the Christian community. The Alien Deception Theory Some people also believe that the devil will use deception, making the Antichrist appear as an alien from another planet. This theory is based on the idea that the Antichrist will use supernatural powers to trick people, as mentioned in the Bible in passages like Matthew 24 verse 4 and 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1, which warn of powerful lies and fake miracles in the end times. Throughout history, there have been stories of earthly people interacting with beings from other worlds found in cultures like the Sumerians. The religious leader theory, certain beliefs suggest that the Antichrist could be a religious figure. According to this theory, the Antichrist might use deceptive acts and supernatural signs to establish a worldwide religion. This notion is linked to a biblical concept that discusses the idea of spiritual deception, wherein the Antichrist could deceive people through his religious influence and purported miracles. This perspective envisions the Antichrist as a charismatic religious leader who misguides followers through seemingly miraculous acts. The political leader theory, this theory suggests that the Antichrist will emerge as a powerful global political leader capable of uniting nations under a single government. Initially, he promises peace and prosperity but ultimately steers people away from their faith in God. This concept aligns with biblical passages like Daniel 7 verses 23-2, where there is mention of a distinct fourth kingdom that will dominate the entire world. This could symbolize the Antichrist's rule over a global government. The verse also alludes to this kingdom's forceful or diplomatic control over many nations. Daniel 7 verse 4 adds that ten kings emerge from this kingdom, with the Antichrist standing out as more powerful and even removing three of these kings. This underscores his unique leadership qualities, 
which might stem from his charisma or political prowess. Lastly, Daniel 7 verse 2 predicts that the Antichrist will oppose God, oppress religious believers, and seek to alter laws and customs. This implies an attempt to divert worship from God to himself and reshape societal norms in alignment with his own beliefs. Overall, this theory portrays the Antichrist as a charismatic political leader who leads people away from their true faith. It has led to speculations about various prominent political figures potentially being the Antichrist whenever they rise to power, creating a recurring theme in discussions surrounding the Antichrist. Finally, the spirit of the Antichrist theory, some theories today also suggest that the Antichrist could be connected to advanced technology and artificial intelligence. These ideas focus on how this Antichrist-like figure might deceive and control people, similar to what's described in the book of Revelation. Now let's talk about the Antichrist. He hasn't appeared on the world stage yet, but his influence is already here. We need to be alert and wise, recognizing the signs and safeguarding ourselves from his impact. The Bible warns us about the Antichrist in 1 John 4 verse 3, saying that anyone who doesn't acknowledge Jesus isn't from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, and it's already active in the world. If we observe our world today, we can see it. Moving in a particular direction with signs that the spirit of the Antichrist is becoming more visible, we must recognize these signs and stay true to God's teachings. One evident sign of the Antichrist's influence is the rise of secularism and the rejection of God's moral values. People are becoming more self-centered, prioritizing their desires and often disregarding the well-being of others. This self-centered attitude goes against Jesus' teachings of love and selflessness, the Antichrist spirit. Thrives in a world that values human desires over God's plan and righteousness. The spirit of the Antichrist is already at work in our world today. The Apostle John mentioned the Antichrist and how there would be precursors leading up to his arrival, all influenced by the same spirit. Just as believers can be filled with the Holy Spirit, some people can be influenced by the spirit of the Antichrist. We can see a decline in reverence for Jesus Christ and increased anti-God sentiments in society. This is reflected in growing lawlessness, a trend that's becoming more evident over time. For example, in the past, you could find Bibles in American classrooms and UK hotel rooms, but now, Bibles are disappearing from public spaces, and the fear of God is declining globally. All of this is paving the way for the arrival of the Antichrist. People sometimes think that when the Antichrist comes, he'll have to make significant changes to the world, but that's not necessarily the case. When he does arrive, the world will already be prepared for him. The spirit of the Antichrist is working in the world, leading to a decline in the fear of God. This shift is a sign of the times, as Jesus mentioned in the Bible. Now you might be curious about where this man comes from. According to the Bible, I believe he emerged from the European coalition. The Bible indicates that early in his career, he seized control of three nations, and with the authority of those three nations, he gained power over the European coalition. Eventually, he rises to rule over the entire world. When we discuss the false prophet in a moment, you'll learn that his strategy for gaining global control involves issuing a kind of license to everyone known as the Mark of the Beast. This license was established to control the world's economy. To qualify for the right to buy and sell, you must worship the beast, who is the Antichrist. That's where the term Mark of the Beast comes from. He secures dominion over the entire world through this system. Moreover, there's a key event, the Antichrist made a covenant with Israel at the start of his career. He promises to protect Israel from all its Arabic enemies in this covenant. As a result, Israel returns to their homeland and begins rebuilding, even disarming themselves because they believe they are safe. They use their resourcefulness to rebuild their economy. However, the Bible tells us that while they are living in peace, the Antichrist breaks his covenant with Israel. The peace treaty is terminated after three and one two years when the Antichrist enters and defiles their temple. He destroys their place of worship. 
When he made the initial covenant, he allowed Israel to continue their religious practices, but after three and one two years, he forbade their worship. This act is called the abomination of desolation. The Antichrist's actions are indeed shocking. He enters the Jewish temple, even going into the Holy of Holies, the holiest place in the temple. He removes all the sacred items and sets up a statue of himself, turning it into an idol. The Antichrist compels people worldwide to bow down and worship this image. This level of persecution and blasphemy is hard to grasp. The persecution by the Antichrist is not limited to overt actions. An insightful perspective reveals that the Antichrist's control over the world will impact people in various ways. If you can't buy or sell, you won't have access to food and necessities. Many during the tribulation may die from starvation because they won't be able to participate in the world's economy. Their lives will become increasingly difficult under the rule of the Antichrist, a cruel leader empowered by Satan, Satan's unholy trinity, and the false prophet. Just as God has a trinity, Satan also has an unholy trinity. In this wicked counterpart, Satan represents God the Father, the Antichrist corresponds to God the Son, and the false prophet takes the role of God the Holy Spirit. These unholy counterparts are empowered by Satan and serve the purpose of orchestrating evil on an unprecedented scale. The false prophet is not primarily a religious or theological figure. Instead, he becomes an economic authority under the Antichrist's rule. He manages the religious and economic aspects of the New World Order, enforcing the beast's mark. This mark is critical for participation in the global economy and is strongly linked to worshipping the Antichrist. The false prophet becomes the one who compels everyone to bow down to the Antichrist, effectively making him the world's worship leader. Antichrists march towards Israel in the Battle of Armageddon. The Antichrist will march against Israel to wipe them off the face of the earth. He sets out on this mission and prepares for it. However, things take a sudden turn at 1302. An unexpected twist occurs when Jesus Christ returns. The Antichrist, who had been leading these armies, now confronts Jesus. Christ is accompanied by his holy ones and angels. With just a breath, he deals with the rebellious people on earth, leading to immense destruction. Revelation 19th chapter illustrates this destruction, even to the extent that God summons the birds of the air from all over the earth to clean up the resulting carnage. It's a scene of unprecedented chaos. In Revelation, the Apocalypse and the return of Jesus Christ, the Battle of Armageddon is often called the Apocalypse. When Jesus Christ is dramatically unveiled to the entire world, it's the grand revelation of Jesus. As this epic battle concludes, Jesus returns, dismantles the Antichrist's armies, and cleanses the earth. What follows is the next phase of God's plan. With the victory of Jesus over the Antichrist, a new era begins where Jesus establishes his kingdom on earth, a period known as the Millennium. The word Millennium is a combination of a mill, meaning a thousand, and annum, signifying years. During this Millennium, Christ rules, and those who believed in him and were raptured to heaven return to assist in governing the earth. King David plays a significant role as Jesus's vice-regent. The millennium is a time when all that was lost due to the fall of humanity is restored and is even better than before. The Great White Throne Judgment is a profound revelation of Jesus Christ as the Judge. This judgment involves several judgments, and the one referred to is the Great White Throne Judgment. At the judgment seat of Christ, no unbelievers are present. Believers give an account of themselves. In contrast, at the Great White Throne Judgment, there are no believers, only unbelievers of all time. This is the moment when all non-believers stand before the judge of the entire earth and give an account of their lives. The Bible mentions that books will be opened, although they aren't listed in the book of Revelation. Also, the Bible tells us about various books like the Book of Life and books that record their life, words, and conscience. 
The most crucial book is the Book of Life. Revelation 20 highlights that if one's name isn't written in the Lamb's Book of Life, they will be cast into the lake of fire, facing eternal suffering. Now, let's discuss Satan, the Accuser, and his companions. At the end of the Tribulation, during the Battle of Armageddon, the False Prophet and the Beast are cast into Hades. They remain there while Satan is bound but not yet cast into the Lake of Fire. After the Millennium, Satan eventually joins his two comrades in the Lake of Fire. They become the first inhabitants of Hell, the Lake of Fire. Those who rejected Christ, followed Satan's ways, and took the mark of the beast to avoid judgment will also face this dreadful fate, being cast into the lake of fire along with Satan, the false prophet, and the beast. The Bible unfolds a momentous event, the delivery of Christ's kingdom to the Father. The scriptures describe the millennium in great detail. People in the millennium live long, have children even when they are 100 years old, and there's no death or sickness. It's a pristine period that we eagerly anticipate, like an extended glimpse of heaven. God's plan, as revealed in the scriptures, has dark moments, but even in those dark times, His grace and mercy shine through. Even during the tribulation, God sent 144,000 people and two mega-witnesses to the earth because of His love and compassion for humanity. If someone doesn't reach heaven, it won't be because God didn't want them there. God has done everything in His power, including giving His own Son, to pro. When you stand before the Lord someday and He asks why He should allow you into His heaven, you can confidently say that you received His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your Savior and substitute. He has promised you the gift of eternal life. This is the message, God loves you, Christ died for you, and there's a way to heaven. Make your reservation now, for it will be too late after you die. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. What do you think of the Antichrist's role in Israel's future? Comment below and subscribe for more.